Hey people, welcome to The Run Testers, and in this video we're here with our multi-tester review of the new Hoka Speedgoat 6. Now Hoka's multi-purpose trail shoe has been tweaked, you've got changes to the upper and the midsole, those are largely to boost the durability rather than really change that ride too much. So does it stay true to the Speedgoat DNA? Is it still a good multi-purpose trail shoe? Well, here's our verdict on the Hoka Speedgoat 6. Some quick details then, starting with the midsole stack and the Speedgoat 6 stack height comes in at 40 mils in the heel, 35 mils in the forefoot for a five mil drop. That's in the men's, in the women's it's 38, 35 also for a five mil drop. It weighs in slightly lighter than the Speedgoat 5 at 10 ounces or 283 grams. In my UK men's eight and a half, the Speedgoat 5 comparison was 10.3 ounces or 291 grams. On price, the Speedgoat 6 will set you back 140 pounds or $155 in the US. Now, for a quick shoe whip round and a look at what's new, well, the Speedgoat 6 looks very much like the Speedgoat 5, and at first glance, it might not seem like much has changed. But there are some important updates here, mainly to the upper and to the midsole. These are kind of aimed to fix, as I said, some of those grumbles that some people maybe had largely on durability with the Speedgoat 5. And let's look at the midsole first. We've still got a compression molded EVA midsole, but it is a new foam formula here that shoots for being lighter and more durable, holding its resiliency over the long term. Some runners felt like the ride dropped off too soon in the Speedgoat 5, and the hope is that this new midsole will deliver that same ride just over the long haul. Up top, you've got a new engineered woven material upper that's also lighter, and once again, it aims to be a bit more hard wearing. I think one of the things that people found was the other sort of uppers in the Speedgoat 5 flex a little bit. There are some additional internal supports and a kind of cage of sort of tapes across the midfoot section in here that create a more locked in feel. You've also got gusseted tongues. You've got a dynamic vamp here, which you saw on the Speedgoat 5. That's a more flexible section in the middle that offers some additional stretch and flex. It's slightly bigger on this than in the Speedgoat 5. It's also made from a different material to that shoe. There's a bit more also of a rigid heel clip here on the Speedgoat 6. Now, if you flip them over, you've still got the Vibram Mega Rip outsole that works really well. You've got five mil multi-directional lugs. You've got about the same quantity of lugs overall versus the Speedgoat 5, but there's a new lug pattern here and a slightly shallower channel in the middle that ought to hold less mud. Quick word on fit from either more. Hoka's shoes tend to fit snug and the Speedgoat 6 is no different. I ran in my regular Hoka size, which is a UK 8.5 US 9, and the fit is definitely hugging without much room in the toe box. That's fine for shorter runs on flatter trails and it does a good job of limiting any unwanted movement on the shoe. I had no sliding off the midsole at all with that really secure midfoot lockdown. However, if you like a roomier fit with lots of wiggle room in the toe box, space for your toes and feet to kind of swell and spread, particularly if you're planning to run long, long ultra hours, it will probably pay to consider moving half a size up. Comes the fit of the Hoka Speedgoat 6. I've got my normal size here, which is a UK 9, a US 9.5. That's the size I have across the Hoka range and I've used for past versions of the Speedgoat. I would say it is the right size for me. It's a good size. It's got enough room in the toe box for most kinds of runs and then a good hold around the heel and midfoot. I say for most kinds of runs, because if you can do a lot of descending in the shoe, then maybe is a case for getting that little bit more room in the toe box by going for half a size up. Like I did a few runs in this where I was going up and down constantly. And although I wasn't really like bruising my toes or really hurting them, I was noticing the front of the shoe a little bit and maybe I could have got that little bit more room by going half a size up i'm often in between a us 9.5 and a 10 so for flat running you know normal running in general i'll be fine in this shoe but maybe if you have got mountains in mind there's a case for looking at that extra room in the toe box so you're not hitting your toes too much overall i'd say it is a shoe that does fit at like kind of true to size but if you are kind of in between sizes and are worried about having that room in the toe box you might want to look at the larger one of the two Now the Hoka Speedgoat is a long-term favourite trail shoe of mine. I find it treads the line between road and trail really well. It also handles that kind of compact, runnable, groomed off-road and more technical terrain really well. There's generally always been a good balance to this shoe. I find it protective, connected, just precise enough. Fortunately as well, I think the Hoka Speedgoat 6 is going to live up to that. The changes haven't drastically altered what you get from the ride, comfort or performance, though it has changed it slightly. In testing, I've logged close to 35 miles in the Speedgoat 6. Much of that has been on the more compact, kind of groomed off-road. I've not pushed this up and down anything seriously steep mountain trails. I'm kind of lacking in that terrain where I live. 
but I have taken it on some rolling hills, stony ground, softer fields, woodland trails, all of those things. My longest run was two hours and I mixed up the tempo from my kind of plodding ultra pace to a faster trail marathon pace at sub seven minute miles just to see how it copes when you go a bit faster. I mean, the key is in the name. Now the Hoka Speedgoat 6 offers good step in comfort with a familiar Hoka feeling. If you've run in past generations of this shoe, I think it's really more of the same with that close fitting Hoka hug. It can initially feel a shade narrow if you have wider or sort of higher feet, higher insteps. But overall, I found it easy to get them sitting comfortably on the foot and I ran in comfort right from the start in this shoe. I think the upper changes work. There's a bit more structure to the weave that feels more supportive, but also suggests that it will wear a bit better, hold its shape a bit better for the long haul. And I'll take the small weight savings, even though I don't think you really notice them that much versus the Hoka Speedgoat 5. I did a side-by-side and -side very little to choose really in terms of when you're out there running. Now I appreciate the small extra padding detail on the tongues here too as well. If you're planning long haul ultras, that can help take the edge off lace lockdown. Just adds just a smidge of extra comfort, which is always welcome. When it comes to the ride, I found it easy to settle into the shoe and I immediately recognized that protective but not over cushioned speed goat ride. It's medium to firm, but nicely balanced with good reliable wide platform that's stable and offers just enough ground contact and control. Now on the harder, firmer trail conditions, it's a bit more forgiving in terms of the cushioning. The new Formula Foam has swapped some softness for response, but it's still softer than something like the Innovate Trail Fly, though maybe not as soft as an Asics Gel Trabuco or a Merrill Moore flight. It's not squidgy and loose underfoot and it treads a happy middle ground. I found it nicely responsive with all the reliability in the landings, transitions and toe offs that I've enjoyed from previous speed goats. It's a shoe I think you kind of know where you're at with. You know what you're gonna get each time you drop your foot down and hit the ground. The grip is excellent too. It stuck to everything I ran across, though admittedly I tested it mainly in dry conditions. I did have some days where the Rem River Thames had received, I was on some wet sort of stuff but overall dry it performed well across my range of paces happily eating the trail at a slower and heavier clip but delivering control and response when i moved up to my fastest trail pace i found i could plod all power in the hoka speed goat six it's not an all-out strip back trail racer but it's no slouch either when it comes to durability i've not noticed any degradation in the midsole performance and nothing to worry about from the uppers so far so I think there are no worrying signs of wear and tear. It feels to me like a shoe that should have a decent lifespan, but then I didn't really struggle with the durability on the Hoka Speedgoat 5 too much. So it comes to the run test. I haven't actually done a huge amount of distance in the shoe, kind of like 40 or 45K, but I spent a lot of time in it because my runs have been very slow. I've been going up and down hills most of it. I took it on holiday with me in Gran Canaria. While I wasn't able to get up any really big mountains or anything like that, I did do a lot of running up and down like little hills and stuff like that on a nice variety of trails. And it was a really good shoe to have with me for that holiday. So the kind of terrain I've covered, so over in Gran Canaria, there's a lot of rocky terrain, kind of you know, hard rocks, kind of cut stairs into kind of the sides of you know, ridges and mountains and that kind of thing, and then some loose gravel, and then back home in the UK, I've gone into the forest with it on some nice forest trails, some single tracks and twisting stuff with roots and that, and then nice grassy stretches and a lot of kind of just hard packed mud as well. So nice range of terrains, and I think that is always the strength with the speed goat. It is a shoe that is very capable across a huge range of terrains and at a huge range of distances. It's a very versatile trail shoe, and and one that I think that really does tick the box as a trail all-rounder because it's not the lightest shoe in the world. It's a bit lighter than its predecessor, but it can move quite quickly. It's also very comfortable to move slowly in over long periods of time as well. I always get the feeling with Speedgoat, it's just a very safe shoe as well. Like if you are going somewhere, you're not really sure on the trails you're going to run. Like this arrived just before I went to Gran Canaria on holiday, and I was just absolutely delighted it had arrived. It's a shoe I knew would deliver traction across kind of any terrain I was likely to face. It would be comfortable, and it really does that really well. Like if you're not the most experienced trail runner like myself, like hitting slightly sketchy descents and stuff like that, this is a great shoe to have on your feet because it does catch you. It provides that reliable traction. It gives protection to the legs, like on muscles like mine that aren't really used to pounding up and down hills, and and it was really ideal all round. So like, I did a lot of like I say up and down hills. I did one like kind of 11k run with about five meters of elevation and i was just going up and down this hill and it's nimble enough to kind of push up this hill and you know have the feeling that you're not being weighed down by the shoe and then coming down it kind of kind of pounding down like a steep hill like it does catch the legs like when you're on tired legs and you're starting to lose a bit of focus and you're not really you know, that keen to be coming downhill again because your quads are starting to hurt the shoe does give you a nice element of protection the grip is there to make sure you're not slipping
sleeping as you're landing. It's just a really solid trail shoe. Like having some upgrades here compared to the Speedgoat 5, like I think a little bit lighter is always nice. I don't really notice a massive amount of extra pop in the midsole. I've done a little short run wearing both shoes. I think, you know, they're pretty similar. I think you need a little upgrade with the Speedgoat 6 for sure because you have got that lighter shoe and the slightly nicer midsole. But overall, the Speedgoat 5, also a very good shoe and you get kind of getting a similar amount of response. Like this isn't a shoe that I'd go and sprint a short trail race in or anything like that. But you know, for longer distances, it's certainly like a fast shoe and I think not far off the performance of the kind of carbon plate trail shoes you have out there. Like it's not the liveliest foam underfoot here. Like you are going to get better foams. Like the new Tecton X3 has obviously a bouncier feeling and there are other really impressive kind of trail super shoes like, like the Adidas Terex uh, Speed Ultra. But you know, this is a really reliable shoe and on the trails, I think that's the most important thing. It gives you a stable ride. It gives you a supportive ride. It doesn't feel heavy underfoot. There's a little bit of pop to the foam. Grips really well. Yeah, all around really enjoyed the run test in this shoe. It's just a fantastic versatile shoe. The only thing it really doesn't do that well, I think, like the predecessor would be very deep mud because this outsole will grip okay in it but you're gonna get a bit more clogged than if you use a shoe that has more like studs or something like that So Speedgoat 6 is an excellent trail shoe. I think it's the one I'd recommend if you just want one trail shoe to do everything. You're not really sure what you're going to do in the future. You're not sure where you're going to be running right now. If you're going short, long, fast, slow, hard trails, soft trails, the Speedgoat 6 really does cover them all really well. It's a very comfortable shoe. I think it will work for most people. I just think it's a really good shoe all around, and it's the one trail shoe I would buy if I was just going to get one trail shoe myself. And it's especially good if you are looking at that kind of kind of harder trails, rocky trails. It grips well on kind of wet rock, you know, loose gravel, that kind of thing, and just is comfortable, protects legs pretty well all around excellent shoe the main reason to look elsewhere i think when we look at the hoka speedgoat 5 which i think ticks a lot of the same boxes has a similar level of performance it's a little bit heavier hoka say the midsole is better on the new shoe but i think in practice you're going to get a very similar level of performance out of that shoe it's going to do all the same stuff really well and if you see it a lot cheaper i'd probably look at the speedgoat 5 same price i would get the speedgoat 6 though just because you have got that slightly lighter shoe and then there are other shoes out there like if you are someone who probably errs more towards soft ground the one an all-rounder something like the Saucony peregrine is very good i think the speedgoat is a bit more comfortable it's a bit better on hard ground. I think the grip is a bit better on those kind of rocky trails, but the Peregrine is a very good shoe across a nice wide range of trails and does grip pretty well on soft ground as well. So if you're a UK runner like myself and have to contend with mud a lot of the time and want a trail shoe that can do that as well as kind of harder trails, the Peregrine does that really well. Speedgoat's going to be okay in the mud, but if it does get really deep, it's not quite as good as a shoe like the Peregrine, I would say. If you're a little bit put off by the price and can't find a great deal on the Hoka Speedgoat 5, I would look actually at the Catalon shoe, the, the Evedict MT Cushion 2. I really enjoyed testing that shoe. I did find it was a very capable rounder as well. It's not quite as comfortable and protective as the Hoka, but you can go long in that shoe as well it's about 100 pounds i think and it's a really solid all-round trail shoe as well not quite as good as the hoka in terms of the grip and the comfort but does perform well on all those fronts as well so yeah there's a couple of alternatives but i do think if you're going to buy one trail shoe and want to just kind of tick that box and have a shoe that you can do loads of different stuff in it's also quite nice on the road speedgoat 6 would be my top option but yeah like i say i probably would have a little look for a deal on the five first verdict then and the hoka speedgoat 6 updates largely stay true to the speedgoat's dna this is the latest gen it's still a happy trail workhorse that will suit a lot of runners it's a versatile shoe that balances protection, stability and lightness and control with enough precision to take on the technical stuff, but I think enough cushion to eat up a mix of road and trail over the long haul. There's also good response for when things get hard packed and more runnable. You can move in the shoe at faster paces. It's a shoe I'd happily choose to go and get lost on rolling trails for an afternoon where I might plod a bit and power a bit. For Speedgoat fans and trail runners who might only want one off-road shoe, the Speedgoat 6 retains that kind of do-it-all prowess that's a big part of the appeal of this sort of franchise of shoes. If you own a pair of Speedgoat 5s that are still working fine, I wouldn't recommend an immediate upgrade to this. There's not a huge amount of difference. But when the time comes, I think those durability improvements to the uppers and this kind of midsole performance do make the Speedgoat 6 probably a better option. Though there is a big caveat to that. If you can find a Speedgoat 5 on a really good deal, I'd also recommend going for that. As for the alternatives, I think the Speedgoat 6 has stiffer competition now and there are other great options that deliver a similar ride, including the Merrill Agility Peak 5, the Merrill Morefly, it's also a good shoe that comes in nice and cheap. The Adidas Terex Agravich 3 as well, I really quite like. These are all good alternatives, I think, to look for if you're considering a shoe that has the same purpose. So there you have it, that's been our review of the Hoka Speedgoat 6. I hope you found it useful. If you're not subscribed already, we'd really love it if you do us that honor and ring the bell so that you can hear when other vids land on the channel. We'll probably be doing a bunch of head-to-heads with this shoe uh, in the course of time when we get time to do it. So hit us up in the comments if there's something that specifically you would want us to compare it to. If you're looking for a versatile trail shoe, I'm gonna pop a video up on the channel now that you should go and watch. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for stopping by. 
and we hope to see you again soon on the run testers in the meantime happy running people